Hey, welcome back everybody, it's Daniel. In today's video, we're gonna turn this URL here on one of my websites and a bunch of JSON data like small genes and a photo URL and the price. We're gonna get all of this JSON data here and we're gonna turn it into this list of products here. So right now we're working on this e-commerce app. This is part 10, I think. So there are nine other parts before this. So if you wanna go back and see what we did up to this point, like we had added this navigation drawer here where you can select different tabs. Um, kind of the basics, but today we're going to turn this data right here, everything you see right here at this URL, and we're going to fetch it and turn it into this app right here on the right where we're actually loading data. So in real life, this could be socks, it could be jeans, it could be shirts, it could be whatever you want to sell. But it has the image, which being, is being pulled from right here. And just to show you, if I copy this URL and if I go ahead and paste it into a browser, you can see that's exactly the URL you see up here in the first one. And if I were to go back to here and do the second image, same thing. Or we can see the price here, so $29.49. Sure enough, it's $29.49 there. Um, the next one is $19.49. That's how much it costs. So hopefully this is this will be a useful overview of pulling JSON data. This is all JSON data. This is formatted JSON data I just came out with. And we're going to turn it into this right thing on the app. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we need to do is just copy this URL and get it inside of the app. So I'm going to copy the URL there and I'm going to go back to Android Studio. And right now we're kind of hard coding all of the products here. Um, all of this code right here goes and does that, but let's get rid of that. Instead of doing that manually, we're going to pull all of these products from the web. So how can we do that? So let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and just get started. So we'll do, we'll create a new variable. We'll name this your, uh, let's name this JSON equals, uh, then we want to do a URL, uh, that's java.net there, that's fine, and then we're going to do, paste that in there, and then we're going to do, I think it's like read text, so read text, what it'll do is it'll say, hey, go to this URL here and fetch all of the text, so it's going to go to this URL, and if I go back to Chrome to pull it up again, you'll see sure enough, this is the URL, I can refresh it and load it. Um, everything is working just fine. We're gonna fetch that and we're gonna load it inside of the app. So we're getting an error here because we don't actually have products set up. I'm gonna go ahead and comment that out so it doesn't actually affect anything. Then I'm gonna go ahead and run it. There's the keyboard, there's the run button up there, but I'm pretty much always gonna use the keyboard shortcut to trigger that just cause that's what it's faster and I do it all the time. So let's open this up and let's run it and let's see, let's see what happens here. So wait a second, great old builders. Oh, and it crashed. So what's going on? If you go back to Logcat, we can see, um, we can kind of see the main act, main fragments, which, oh I, yeah, I made fragment open up. So open up main fragment. That's what we're working with here. And it's saying, what's the error exactly? If we scroll up, it should say something about network on main thread exception. So in Android, it kind of protects us against slow apps. So say, fetching this URL, say the website is really, say the website is really slow and there are like a million people hitting it every second. So you have like, you know, bill, a billion requests a day. Or, I don't know, I'm just making stuff up. Just say you have millions of, millions of people loading this URL and it, and it becomes slow for some reason. In this, day, in this day and age, it doesn't really need to be slow ever, but just say it is, for example. Um, say this takes 10 seconds. Well, do you really want the app to, just freeze for 10 seconds so the user can't do anything at all? Um, no, so we need to do this on a background thread. So threading is something that's really popular, or not popular, but it's, it's what you need to do to do stuff in the background. So in the background, say, hey, well, this takes, you know, say, say this URL takes two minutes. In those two minutes, we're not gonna freeze the app. We're gonna say, hey, you can still browse other products. You can still add stuff to your car. You can still save stuff. You can still favorite stuff or whatever. So what can we do here? Well, there's an easy solution. There, there are lots of solutions, but an easy solution is if I go back to Chrome and I already have it open up, but there's this library from Kotlin. From, uh, so we're gonna use this library here. So if we, I'll put this URL in the description. I'll put all of these URLs in this description. So let's go ahead and, so this library here, just click, click, click on it from the YouTube description. And if we scroll down, we should have it 
in here. Here we go. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that dependency and we're going to go back to Android Studio. I'm going to go to the bottom and then open up. It's inside of uh, Gradle scripts here. So I'm going to go inside Gradle scripts and then the module app one. And I'm going to scroll to the, that's going to close that. I'm going to scroll to the bottom and I'm going to paste that in there. Now we need, uh, so we have the library there, but we don't have the version. So what is the version? Let's go back and let's see. The version is like 10.7. If you go to releases, we can see, yeah, 10. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that. Just go back to Android Studio, delete that. And I'm going to paste that in there. And I'm going to get rid of that space, reformat the code. I'm going to go ahead and sync it. And this is uh, going to ignore that for now. We'll fix it later some other time. So wait a couple of seconds. Gradle, Gradle finishes and we have it pulled in. Okay, cool. So now what, what does it give us access to? Let's see. Now we can do, I think, do a sync. Okay, so this is how do a sync works. So you, you just start with the keyword there. Then anything inside of here, this is all done on a background thread. So all of that code here can be done in a background thread in the background while the user is doing other stuff. So I'm going to cut that line and I'm going to put that line inside of the do a sync. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. So now let's see what happens. So I'm going to go ahead and run this and let's go back to our app and let's just see what happens. So give it a second for Gradle to finish building. It opens up and nothing that's because we got rid of the products here so but this didn't crash your app and just to show you something if i were to go to say we were to do oh this is something else that's also important so you have everything between there and there on a background thread except for when you do ui thread so now all of this will be done in a background thread and this will be done in the main ui thread so this is where we can actually display our data and stuff so let's do this let's do d Daniel, again, we've done some of this in previous videos and we'll do JSON and then, so let's just see if we're getting it or not. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that and I'm gonna open up Log Hat and I'm gonna expand that a little bit. And here you are. So we have, there's our Log Hat for Daniel and sure enough, we named it Daniel. And then we have the JSON and there it all is. So we're getting back the results now. So what's the next thing we need to do? We need to parse we need to look at this data right here, this JSON, and we need to map it to this model that we created earlier. So the title, the photo URL, and the price. So we need to map all that together. So let's go back to main activity, and we're gonna use a tool called JSON. So that's something else that I can open up here, and I already have it open up. Uh, it's this library from Google here. So we're gonna scroll down, and we're gonna go ahead and copy the Gradle dependencies there. And right now it's on 2.8.5, but you can always go here and see what the latest is, and sure enough, 2.8.5. Let's go back to Android Studio. I'm gonna close the log cat go to the module app and we're gonna put it down here and again save it and sync it this should pull it in we're gonna ignore that for now and as soon as this finishes we're gonna go ahead and close it because we're done with that uh, what's going on we'll fix that in just a second we'll Okay, cool. So, so back to here. Okay, so we have JSON now. So now inside of the UI thread, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do, let's just go ahead and get our products here. So, so we have, we're, first of all, we go to that URL, we fetch the data, and then in the UI thread, we wanna do stuff with it. So let's do this, let's do val products. So this variable is not gonna change, so that's why we do val instead of, if it's gonna change, we can do var, but it's not gonna change, so we'll do val, uh, products, that's what we named it before, equals, and then we have access to JSON. So remember what we just pulled in right there, we pulled in JSON from Google. So we can actually use that here now. So we'll do JSON, and there it is, dot from JSON, and what we wanna do is we wanna convert this text, we wanna convert all of this into this model. So let's go ahead and do that. So go ahead and close that. Uh, so we have from JSON there, uh, uh, let's go let's go inside of here and what we need to do is we first need to pass in the JSON so we have our JSON I can just type JSON and again it's the variable there where it's getting the data there then we put a comma and then what do we want to map it to well this is going to be an array of product so we're gonna get an array of that so then we need to do class Java and there we are. So this is all great, and it's gonna map 
Actually, there's one more thing we need to do. Let's, let's go to the end. Let's do, I think there's dot two lists. Yeah, two lists. So this will give us a list of that. So very cool. So I'm going to go ahead and save it. And I'm going to run it. And again, let's go back to the emulator and just wait. Gradle's building right now. Give it a couple of seconds. And we'll see that... Yes, okay, everything is blank. So what's going on here? Well, we're successfully fetching the data and we have it. And if I were to go to the log cap, we should see this here from 1019. Sure enough, it's 1019 a.m. in the morning here in Austin, Texas, United States of America, US, United States. I know I have listener, uh, I know I have viewers across the world. But uh, so here we go. So back to this though. So we're fetching the JSON successfully, but we need to actually do something with it. So we have our products here. Did I run it? Yeah, I think it did. So let's go ahead and do, let's click on that button right there to attach the debugger and just select the first op the option there, that right there and hit okay or enter or whatever. Uh, now let's go to our navigation drawer. Let's go to socks. Then let's go back to home. Did I, oh, I didn't set a breakpoint. So to set a breakpoint is you can, so with, with that now, see like right over here near the number lines, I can actually click on something and it gives me a red, it gives me a red circle there. That's going to say, hey, stop on this. So get, run all this code and stop when you get to there. So now with that, I'm going to go back to, and I'm going to choose another tab. We'll just do socks, go back to home and it stops and it says, hey, it's gonna stop on this line here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press, I think it's F7, I don't know what one of these keys it is, or icons it is, yeah. So step into, I think, no, we don't want that. Here, we're gonna do it a different way. We'll, do, we'll just do this. Uh, did I, I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna click the, sorry, my saw messed up, you know. Let's see, so go ahead and save that. So we need to do, I'm trying to, I, I usually use keyboard shortcuts, but I'm trying to, I don't, don't need, I don't need to know. I'm trying to explain what the keyboard shortcuts are. So let's go ahead and do this again. I'm just going to go to, let's do it a different way. Let's do, let's go to socks. No, let's just, let's just go ahead and just code it up for now. So, so we have our products here. Let's go ahead and copy this uh, recycler view there. I'm going to just get rid of that. What's this, wait, did I copy all of that? Return, oh, this is a fragment, oh, okay. So, so copy all of that, and then we're gonna put this inside, we'll go ahead and just code it for now. Trying to explain the easiest way here. So I'm gonna uncomment this product line here, and this is gonna give us an error because it's looking for different stuff. So it says, hey, there's a mismatch. So what this, so the, brow, the, products, the products adapter is searching for one kind of data. And if we control command, or sorry, if we command click on it, we can see, hey, it's an array list. But what we have up in product is a list. So that's what we're saying. It's the difference between an array list and a list. So let's go back, it's an easy solution for this. Let's go back to our products adapter. And let's do list. I think this will work. I think that's what we're supposed to do. Go back to here. And it goes away. So I'm going to save it, then I'm going to run it. Going to get rid of that. And here, so we're missing some data, but you, we can see we have the pricing there. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a breakpoint just to make it easier to kind of see what's going on. So again, just click on the next to the line number, click next to there, and we can stop there. We can do whatever line you want to stop on. So I'm going to stop on that line right there. We'll just go ahead and do that. Um, then we're going to go back to that icon there and click OK. Did we run this? I think we did. So I'm going to go back to socks, and this will be easier to explain here. So go back to home, and it freezes there. Now it automatically stops on that line, and we can tell that because of the blue line there. That means, hey, we're stopped there. And it's giving us a little hint saying, hey, there are eight products there, so eight products. We can actually go down here, and this should open up, and we can actually see what all these products are. So the, it starts at zero, so we have a photo URL, we have a price, and a title. So some of that stuff is null. See how the photo URL is null and title is null? That's because we haven't, well, it's because of a mapping issue, mapping the data to the field. So see we have price there, and if you go back to here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and click that button right there, and we have the pricing there. But what's going on here? So if we go back to Chrome, and if we go back to our data, we can see, hey, it's called name, photo underscore URL, and price. 
And if we were to look at Android Studio, and if we go inside of our product model, you can see, hey, it's called title. So we'll start with one, so title versus name. So it's really, we need name.title. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, hey, whenever, I'm gonna put some spacing here. So I'm gonna say, hey, whenever you get to title, um, do, this is really gonna be called name. So we're gonna save that. So it's gonna say, hey, wherever the JSON says name, turn that into title. So I'm gonna save that and run it, and let's see what happens here. And here we have, our, so we have our photo, we have our title there. So black shirt, red jeans, yellow shirt, blue jeans, all that kind of stuff. There's one more thing we need to do. So look, we have photo URL there with no spacing and a capital U there. But if you were to go back to our Chrome, we'll see, hey, it's photo underscore URL. So let's do the same thing there, let's do this. Do a serial lies name, we'll do photo underscore photo URL. I'm gonna save it, and we don't need to do the price because the price is exactly fine. That's exactly how it is. We just need to do the underscore because it's a little bit different there. Or another option would be to just rename this to photo URL like that. That will work, but in this case, we'll just run it and see. So let's see what happens here. And we have our images, so cool. So we have all of our images here. Um, there are only eight items, and in real life, you might have 50 items, you might have 100 items. You might even have thousands of items on which you wanna maybe provide a way to, for users to filter down. Um, so what else? I mean, there's all kinds of stuff we can do, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and stop this video here. We have the stuff working. Again, just to kind of recap. So first we have our JSON data here, which is all of this. This is a REST API. We added in some libraries from uh, JetBrains. This is really good. Uh, this allows us to do stuff on a background. So in the background, we're gonna go to that URL, we're gonna get all the data there, then we're gonna turn it into products. We're gonna turn it into this model here where we can access these variables. Then we're gonna say, hey, go ahead and just go ahead and uh, set up our products and send it to products adapter. And this is work we've done in previous videos. So go back to my YouTube channel and check out all the first nine parts. And that's, I'm trying to think of what else, that's basically it. So hopefully you'll learn something. Um, this is, you know, if you have questions or if it doesn't work, leave a comment and I'll try to respond to all the comments I can. Again, if you wanna connect with me on LinkedIn or Twitter or whatever, I'll put some links in the description and I'll put all of these, I'll put all of these links in the description. So go ahead and check out the description and hopefully you can get this up and working. Again, if you have questions, ask in the comments, thanks.